Hello, theme park enthusiasts, and welcome back to Planet Coaster, and to my city walk for Warner Brothers. In this episode, I'm going to add in a couple of different buildings here, as well as our first and primary ride for the park. So what you're seeing put in here is actually this wonderful nightclub that I found on the workshop. I will be giving credit to the buildings from the workshop and the different items I use from the workshop, as I do in each of the videos in the actual description of the video on YouTube. But with this, I do make some changes to the building here just to fit in more of what I wanted. So I take out a few of the restrooms that I felt like didn't really fit. I also extend the concrete here so that way it lines up with and sort of takes uh, connection to the bowling alley area. And the reason I put that in first is I really needed to see where this walk would go over because before I could put in the ride, I sort of needed to know where we're getting from there. So originally I was going to use these bathrooms at the back of the nightclub, and they just weren't working for me. They didn't fit right, and I didn't like how the, uh, it made the overall area. So instead I decided, you know, I'll just use the areas that are right here, make them function. <coughs> Same thing with that. Didn't really need it, so I decided to take it out and just put it in a glass wall instead. So, remove those back bathrooms, they're not needed, we'll just have a nice nightclub there. That once again, is a building that will have a function in-game, even though it's not the function that it's designed for. But people will go in and use it, so it'll look like people are going to the nightclub. Now, this is the primary ride for the City Walk, and I'll explain a little bit as to my rationale for it. We're putting in a gondola ride here. And for anyone who has sort of been to Disney World or looked at Disney World and how it functions, one of the primary ways to get to the parks is via a gondola system they have called their Sky Ride. And with this Sky Ride, they're able to actually have a large number of guests get from one area to another in a very efficient way because the gondola pretty much continually is moving so it just allows people to get right on and move off and get to the park and such. So, as I had said, I was inspired for this creation overall by my honeymoon and both Universal Studios and Disney. The Universal Studios we've seen in a lot of the city walk design so far. But what I wanted then is I wanted to have it where everybody basically gets to the parks overall and parks in those parking garages. Now, as I said, realistically, you would need more than just two parking garages. I realize that. But for the sake of Planet Coaster, I feel that two is good for a starting point. But then what's going to happen is we're going to have the guests enjoy the city walk as much as they want. Parking and getting into the city walk is going to be completely free. And then if they want to go to the park, you have to have your tickets. And you show your tickets to get onto the gondola that takes you to the specific park. So that way we don't have a big parking lot at the park in question, anything like that. It's just a nice, easy way to get the guests over there. And so that's what I've created here. Now I'm not gonna have the actual park be part of this uh, area here because this is just the design for the city walk. So what I did here is that you can see over on that other side, it's just built where the other side of the gondolas will be. And I'm gonna put one other ride that also goes over there. And basically what we're gonna have is a mountain in between which is going to give the illusion that you are traveling through this mountain to get over to the park area. And I will work on that more before the end of the episode, so you'll be able to see a bit more of that. But at this point, I had that set up, and I wanted to put in another building here still. Oh, actually, no, I've been wrong in the order. We're actually going to go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and put in the water feature that I want here. So once again, the city walk is very much divided from the parks. Yes, I wanted a mountain that you go through to get to the parks, and that way when I actually do the different park designs, such as the first park that I'm going to be working on following the city walk area, all I have to do is have a gondola ride that comes out of the mountain and to the front of the park, which is exactly the plan I have in place. But also, I wanted this to be a very pretty thing for the guests to go over. So I wanted to add in some nice water here. And I will, in the next episodes before we finish this area, be working on that more. We're going to put in some probably some fountains that are going to be in the lake area, as well as possibly some waterfalls off the mountain itself, just to give some visual interest to what's going on. 
Now, as I was saying, I did want to put in another building here, and I was just sort of using that building from the workshop there as a guide as far as size and such for what I was looking for and how big it was going to be and where it was going to fit. But as you can see, I jumped back and forth between that and working on the gondola ride. I figured, you know, at this point, let me go ahead and put in the building around the gondola ride. So, this ride here is going to be the one that takes us to the first park that I'm going to create. What I'm going to probably do is save this uh, city walk at that point. I'll put it onto the workshop so that way people can play with it and enjoy it as they want. But what I will then also do is I'm going to go ahead and after I get done with that first park and it's fully completed, I am going to put in another park at least, but probably three or four different parks. And so for each of those different parks, there will be a separate gondola ride to get to that park. Each one will have a building that is sort of themed to that particular park, and each one will have its own specific access. So with that, as I said, this city walk will probably not be truly complete when this series is over with, but it will be to the point where we can actually build the first park in question. So with this design of a building here, it is a very basic building, but that is very intentional because of what this building is supposed to be. Now, here I was playing around with the size and everything of that nature, and I'm trying to put down a flooring in here, and I will be honest, I, there's a point here where there will be a, a slight shift in the video, and when that happens, basically, I put it away for that particular day, and I came back to it another day. And things that I noticed I did not like at this point is that, for one, the pathways are elevated. And because of that, you always see the paths, even though I have the concrete under them. I really didn't like the look of that, and it's so high up that to elevate the concrete was just going to look very, very weird. So you will see here in a few moments that I go back through and really change this building overall. Um, another thing I didn't like because of what this building is supposed to represent, I didn't like the two entrances here that sort of face the city walk side. Uh, the one entrance on the other side is okay. Here we see the Warner Brothers logo. And then we'll sort of see what the park is going to be here when we have the uh, this next little bit added to it here. Because obviously it's a Warner Brothers park, but it's more than just a Warner Brothers park. It's going to be Warner Brothers, as you saw there on the sign, Studios Park. So this first park that I have in mind is going to be focused all on different movies that Warner Brothers has created. It's going to be in the same vein as the Disney Studios Park, definitely inspired by Universal Studios and their park. And this park, when we go to create it, is going to feature a lot of very detailed rides. It's not going to have big thrill coasters that are just outside randomly and stuff. That will be probably in a later park. But this one is going to be, as I said, focused much more on the immersion into a storyline. And there's one movie in particular that I absolutely love the books that the movie is inspired by and really inspired the creation of all of this. It was one where once I found out who owned the rights, to the particular movie and thus the book series I had to go ahead and build this park uh, and everything that needed to be around it so that I could go ahead and create this specific ride which in my own mind has already become a land within the movie it's going to be much more than just one ride it's going to actually end up being multiple different rides all focused on this one topic but I'm going to leave that where it is until we actually get to the series covering the studio's park. For now, I did want to put in a restaurant here because we have all these different entertainment venues for people, but we did need something here where the people could go sit down and have a nice meal. And I wanted to be able to face the water so that way people could enjoy the view that they would have from the restaurant of the lake and the different water beaches I'm going to put on it. So... With it being a place like this, I want it to be a nice steakhouse, some place that yes, you could take kids, they could get a burger or something like that, but mom and dad could also enjoy a nice steak and sort of a fine dining experience that still catered to the kids. And so with that in mind, I felt like Yosemite Sam fit perfectly because that's a Yosemite Sam steakhouse. 
So we got a little figure there that once again, I'll give credit to the creator in the description of the video uh, of Yosemite Sam. They did a great job on creating most of the Looney Tunes characters there, and you will definitely see those throughout much of Warner Brothers. I haven't decided yet if there will be a movie based from Looney Tunes in the studios part, but there very well might be. I do have some of the ideas of different places that I'm going to be putting into the studios part, and we will see that when we get there. So then with this, I wanted to sort of blend sort of the stone and sort of the modern wood. And the reason I went with the modern wood, personally I would have liked to use a different colored wood. Modern, you can't really change the color of. But the whole thing with the modern was it allowed me to have the circular pieces there for that tower in the corner. And the way I saw that is that's almost like a private dining room where you'll be able to be on the top area above everyone else in the, the location. And I just thought it added sort of this nice little touch to the place. And I really wanted that for the guests. And because of that, the only wood that would allow me to do the rounded one was the modern. So I stuck with it, even though it's not exactly close to Personally, what I would have liked is the wood that I'm using there for the area that Yosemite Sam stands on by each of the entrances. That would have been my pick if I had gotten one. I just felt like it gave that more old-fashioned look, and I liked that for the restaurant. But as I said, it didn't have the curves to it, so I had to go with the modern wood in order to have this piece in the corner. Now, I will be honest, my wife not a fan of the design of this building. She really doesn't like it overall. She didn't like the mix of the wood and the stone. Um, but it's one of those, I decided to stick with it because I do like the design. I know it's a bit different stuff, but that's sort of the intent of it. This is, once again, a restaurant that is inspired by Looney Tunes. So I want it to be a little bit different and a little bit odd. Uh, and so while he is one of the cartoon characters, I feel like Yosemite Sam would do something that's still is almost normal even though he's cartoonish so that's the direction i went here yes it is almost normal it's almost looking like a, a building you would see someplace but the contrast of the wood and the stone is just a bit on the odd side and once again as i said i, I felt like that sort of fit for the character and what i wanted here so then I'm fitting in, at each of the doors, I go ahead and put in one of the restaurant entrances, because each restaurant is able to have 10 different rooms to it. And with a bit place this big, I felt like, you know what, we can put in a full 20, that's perfectly fine. As I've said before, I don't plan on capping the amount of people that can get into this area here in the city walk. It doesn't have a bunch of rides and stuff in it, so I don't think lagging should be an issue here. So with that in mind, I was wanting to make sure I had plenty of restaurant space for people. And so we have the two different entrances here, which are, as far as visually what I'm wanting it to represent, is just one really big steakhouse. But in reality, as far as the mechanics of the game, it's set up so that it's actually two different restaurants just named the same thing. And then for the two restaurants, they're serving the same thing, which is basically a steakhouse style menu with a few items for the kids on it, because once again, this is gonna be a very kid-friendly place. Here I was looking, just took a moment to look at doors that I felt like might work for the studios building over there, because my intent with it was to have something that does look like it is sort of a recording studio building for the actual Warner Brothers. As I said, I wasn't really happy with the look of the building at this time. I come back later and I figure out what it was that I was not happy about it and go ahead and make the changes necessary to it. So here, just putting some windows into the different areas. As I said, the circular area, I sort of see as like private dining, so that way those people have this unique circular room that they're being served in that they can enjoy a nice meal in the privacy away from people. Then of course, since Yosemite Sam is the focal point of the restaurant, we had to put a spotlight on him. And then we'll go ahead and get a couple of lights here also on the sign to make sure it's all detailed. Um, a lot of these buildings, I do think I will probably end up putting more details onto to make them a little bit more specific in different ways before I actually put this whole thing onto the workshop. I, I will not say that building is done at all right now, but it's sort of done for the moment. 
Uh, it's one of those that sort of my thought is I want to get all the buildings in place I want for this location and then I will go ahead and I will go back through and change or add to to make the detail level that I want before fully finishing the series. Now here, sadly, for some reason, my recording software did not record at the one point while I was working on this building. And as you can see, one thing I had added is I changed the front of the building so that there's only a single entrance in and out of the building, just like you would have in a true studio building. And in order to do that, I had moved the paths around, I changed them up some. And the other thing I did is I found that the building was sort of one uh, block longer on the one side than it was on the other and so it didn't have the symmetry I wanted of sort of this studio type building so that's why I'm going through right now and editing that and then I lower the floor into place because another thing I did do was adjust where the uh, the flooring was so that way it would not have that uh, standout issue that it had before at this point as I said I am going to start allowing the game to just be playing as I'm going along here uh, will allow the guests to move and you'll see that toward the end of this episode because at this point the main ride of the area is put into place uh, all I'm doing right now is I'm putting in some lighting here unfortunately again with this type of lighting the actual light itself doesn't cast enough light by any means so I just went ahead and hit a uh, floodlight or a yeah I think it's a floodlight inside of the lighting picture itself so that way it would work for what I want then I go ahead and just make sure that these are pretty much measured out at the same distance. And I go ahead and uh, we'll duplicate them across the facility. I try to make sure that they are pretty much the same distance across. And in the end, I do find that at the very center of the facility, I have to put them a little bit closer together in order to make them work. But that was okay. It worked out fine. The lighting is good in the building, and I think that it doesn't really have too much of an issue as far as the spacing. So then once I have them all spaced as I want them here, I go ahead and raise them all together into the ceiling, so that way they just, instead of having to move each individual one in the ceiling, much easier to get them all placed at a lower level where I can work on them, and then just move them up as one. There we go. All the lighting is done for that building. I decided, you know, since I've only got the one entrance to the area, I did want something out front here. And since it is talking about studios and stuff, the traditional lights outside seemed to work for me. I, I felt like they were going to be a good thing. I did work a little bit here on trying to get them so that they were sort of timed together and that they moved in tandem. Uh, it was a little bit tricky, and they don't quite mesh up. They're always a little bit off of one another. But I got them as close as I could. It's not exactly perfect, but it was okay. As you can see, not quite together. I did notice as I let people in, the people are enjoying the different locations. They're playing the games in the arcade. They're eating at the different restaurants and stuff. So everything's sort of working as I intended. Uh, the escalators, I do have to put in more curbing if I don't want people clipping through. And I may or may not do that still. And then the last thing I added in for this particular episode is I went ahead and put in a fountain there. So that way the the uh, sidewalk is a bit broken up there and just has a neater look to it. Um, then, now that the guests are in there, I was noticing that people are starting the litter and stuff, as always happens in this game. So I went ahead and I installed all of my seating in the area that's sort of done so far and then also put in a bunch of trash cans that way hopefully as the guests are walking around and stuff they won't make too much of a mess of the area and at the same time i do plan on putting in a full concrete slab to sort of cover up all this area here in the middle so that it looks like it's all cohesive and it looks like it belongs together but for right now, I just went ahead and put the uh, benches where I was able to, and where I thought they wouldn't be too noticeable, even with the uh, with the slab of concrete in place. Then I'm just sort of checking to make sure everybody's doing well, making sure I didn't miss anything, like I had missed some uh, trash cans being needed in those places. And then here, the last thing I wanted to do with this fountain is I wanted to add a little bit of lighting to it. It doesn't work exactly with the water, 
I was hoping it would sort of give the water a little bit of a glow, and that doesn't happen, but it does give a little bit of a blue go glow to the fountain, and I sort of like the look of it overall. I felt like the floodlights were better than the smaller ones, because the smaller ones really just allowed you to see too much of the, the metal. But with that in mind, I'm going to end this episode. If you enjoyed what I did in the episode, feel free to click that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so that you're aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see you back for more Planet Coaster.